Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I plan to get a flyby mission over to Mars slash Duna. And as you can see, I've time warped about 160 days in order to get us to the right position for transfer. At least I think this is about the right angle. I don't have the exact date for that, but I think this this will do. So... Without further ado, uh, let's go to the launch pad and I'll talk about various changes that I've made. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad with the Mars 1 atop the Magni launcher. And so I named the launcher Magni uh, after the Norse god of strength. Obviously a good name. The son of Thor, by the way. So, uh, so if uh, Thor is a good name for a rocket, I guess Magni is one too. Um, so a few changes. Now first of all obviously I am I've already built the payload and that's because in the previous episode it was more building episode and I wanted to get into the action pretty much right away this time and also uh, th there are a lot of uh, it took a long time to make sure I got everything right. Anyway this will also provide some suspense in that uh, n neither you nor I know if I forgot anything Whereas if you're just watching, it might be more obvious whether I forgot something in the payload. Um, so, so there's that. And so, always like to heighten suspense. I'm recording at 1600 by 900 and plan to compress it down to 720p. And maybe uh, I'll, I'll try out whether to expand it out to 1080p. I finally got a monitor that can render in 1080p, so I can actually play the game in 1080p in theory. However, when I tried that, uh, recording and then processing the video afterwards uh, became time prohibitive. It, it took way too long to, to uh, manage a video in 1080p for me with my current hardware. So I'm going to look into what I can do about that. But for now, I, I, I really wanted the extra screen space and uh, um, from comments from ASME, I, I realized that I didn't have enough space here and really should divide up the display and so that we can see the rocket a little bit better so it's not so crowded. So that, that's part of the reason why I'm uh, trying it out at a higher resolution. The problem is if when I then convert the video to MP4 and uh, and then uh, edit and then render, whether the text on all these windows will come out properly. That's uh, you know pixels are pixels and uh, it might be a little bit fuzzy or or choppy. So I'll have to see about that. So apologies ahead of time if it turns out that this is unreadable or difficult to read. Um, but yeah. We have to launch at night it looks like. Uh, you can see I, I've set the moon as a target as a reference for our Mars mission and so we've got our inclination right. Uh, technically we've got enough delta V on this thing to correct inclination but but let's not uh, let's not do anything too inefficient if we can avoid it. Alright uh, you can see I've got space for Kerbals here in my new display situation but we're not carrying Kerbals up this time. So SAS on, throttle is up, and so Mars 1, good name for a Mars mission I think. Uh, first flyby mission to Mars. And we have plenty of science experiments on board. We've got goo experiments, graviolis, uh, and of course the probe core is uh, the one that is meant for a high pass over Duna, so all that is good. The electric charge is probably the only thing. Uh, I don't know how much less solar output there is, or input if you will, uh, there is when we get over to Mars. So whether the calculator, which currently says we're okay on electric charge, will still be okay over there. And the calculator is meant for a Kerbin and the Kerbin system, so it's not entirely clear it'll work the same when we get over to Mars. Uh, whether I could have set it for Duna, I don't know. Okay, so I think uh, we're ready to go. Throttles up, SAS on. Yep, let's go. So again, apologies for it being nighttime, but sometimes... Even NASA can't avoid nighttime launches, so... 
Here we go. Could have tried to put lights on the outside of the vehicle, but I think they might have might be knocked off by uh, far. I don't think they're very aerodynamically efficient, that's for sure. The payload is six tons, and that's plenty of margin to get us to Mars. Uh, this is meant to put ten tons over to the moon, so six tons is easy for it. You can see our Delta V is enormous. For a flyby mission to Mars, that's quite a lot. And that's because of the probe's own uh, Delta V, which is about 4,000. If I recall correctly, I think I used the Estes engine, the EADS Estes engine on the probe. I really should remember that considering I just built it uh, yesterday. Okay. Yeah, so I tried out 1080p, and I tried recording, what I did was I tried recording the Nova C8 launch, uh, a new launch of that in 1080p to see how that would do, because of course the Nova C8 is a really big rocket and takes a lot of resources to, uh, to do that. Uh, the frame rate's around 5 frames per second, the time delay uh, was like uh, 6 six real seconds for one in-game second, so that was quite remarkable. So, but the problem was uh, the render time, uh, so 13 minute launch, uh, the, the in-game time was 13 minutes, uh, took 50 minutes to actually launch it, and then uh, two hours to convert it to MP4, which is what I need in order to edit it in uh, Vegas, and then after that uh, um, cut the whole thing down to back down to the 13 minutes so I time compressed it and then I think it took how long did it take uh, oh it took about an hour after that now that might not seem like much but one of the reasons I can get long videos out so frequently is because I render, I have a very short render time. Well, I mean, relatively short. I mean, depends on how you think about it. But uh, So if it takes too long to render the videos, that causes problems for my ability to... Now, I mean, obviously, maybe you want higher quality videos more uh, less frequently. That's, that's possible. But... I might still try to do the EDB series with the 1080p. I'll have to see how that works out. Interestingly, disk space wasn't a big deal. It actually did not take up much disk space compared to my regular recordings to render it in 1080p. Uh, Fraps does not particularly care, it looks like. So, yeah. That, that was good, but, I mean, of course, Fraps takes an obscene amount of, of uh, space anyway. So for 50 minutes worth of video, it took 19 gigabytes. Yeah. But I'm trying, trying to make this high quality. The other consideration is at 1080p, these things are a little bit small. I, I've, I have to check whether there's a setting in, uh, in the program to make all text bigger or something. Possibly. Of course, that would somewhat defeat the purpose of clearing the space, but... but I do like stuff to be readable. Shouldn't be... 
shouldn't be obscure. And of course, people watching at lower resolutions might have trouble, I don't know. All this is uh, part of the experiment that I'm beginning over here, so we shall see. So this time is the first time I'm scaling up a bit, and we'll see what the results are. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. There we go, and... Okay, boosters are clear. Very nice, very nice. Now, I sense some staging issues here. Uh, the, the top fairings could probably go off before we get to the second stage. Not just yet, though. So, lots of news uh, coming out about uh, future developments in Kuro Space Program. In point two four, we are apparently going to get 64 bits for Windows, which probably means I need to buy some more RAM. <laughs> uh, I've got 8 gigabytes here, uh, which is pitiful for compared to uh, modern day computing, I suppose, uh, but uh, I don't actually do much gaming, believe it or not, so it's just, uh, it's really mostly just space games and Curl Space Program in particular. Uh, every time I try to broaden my horizons, I never really feel like it. Okay, I'm gonna extend the AIES antenna to help us communicate. You can see the tiny little payload up there. A little bit indistinct right now. But yeah, uh, of course, at least not having the 4 gig limit will be nice. I do have some space on that. Hopefully I won't immediately hit my own personal RAM limit. I don't think I executed 30 degrees, did I? So yeah, with uh, point two four, expect. Uh, I think I'll I'll try to put together like the ultimate install of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I've been working on that for quite a while. You know, something that uh, combines like all my favorite mods, uh, B nine Aerospace along. Uh, the EDB series has almost all of them. Uh, it's just that I had to cut out some parts, which is not bad. And of course used uh, aggressive uh, texture uh, replacement, so that's a little bit annoying. If I could just run all those mods with, uh, without the aggressive texture replacement, just use basic or something like that, then that would be better. I don't think it's texture replacement, it's something else. It's texture... Optimism no something. Uh yeah. Don't remember what it's called. Texture replacer is something completely different. And of course uh, you can see the mods I have in the EDB series in the in the press kits that I make for that series. I've got the full list of them in the back of that. And that's pretty much what I would want and then install even after we go to 64 bits. So, really, the only thing that could be an expansion is like Planet Factory and maybe, maybe future versions of Real Solar System, if it's doable, future versions of Real Solar System might take advantage of Planet Factory so that we can have more a more ro robust solar system with all the planets and moons. I don't know if that's possible or not. I haven't actually played much with Planet Factory myself. I've considered it though. Uh, of course, uh, as the default Kerbal system gets a little bit 
done. I mean, I've been... I can't say I've done everything. So, I, I can't say I'm there yet. But, of course, uh, it's a consideration. You know, we've seen these little plants before and know their properties. So, maybe it'll be interesting to discover something that doesn't have a wiki on it, basically. Uh, so you know, figure out what the gravity on this plant is by doing experiments rather than just looking up the wiki might be an interesting thing to do. Okay, just preparing for f really first stage burnout? No, uh, that's, yeah. This is a long stage, isn't it? Yep. Probably shouldn't go down on pitch just yet. Okay. Alright, it's only two stages to orbit. Forgot about that. So... So that's why the first stage is... seems so long. Okay, let me take a closer look at the payload right now, and first of all, check that our antenna is all right. Uh, not that one. I wanted to check the. Don't really see it poking out. Should be on the. Oh, there it is. There it is. I see it now. Okay. I'm gonna extend solar panels now. Now I I've been watching Cerberus uh, RCAF's videos, and I was sort of jealous about his solar panelry. So I added some AIES solar panels for the first time, just to upgrade my own solar panel stuff. So, uh, yeah, Cerberus RCAF uh, is doing uh, realism overhaul as well. And I'm enjoying watching his videos. It sort of has the same general way of going about things. So, I learn a lot from his exploits as well. So it's a little bit in the dark, but you can see Reflectron KR-14. Hopefully that'll have the kind of range that we need. It's about uh, 1 billion kilometers. I think that should cover the full distance between Earth and Mars by quite a lot. Uh, four Mystery Goo containers. So that's that. Four Graviolis. Four Thermometers. Probe core is right behind the main dish, so not exactly easy to see it right now. There it is. And then there's multiple tanks of MMHN-204. The Estes engine burns MMHN-204. I really should up its uh, gimbling angle, though. And so do the thruster blocks, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. There's no reaction wheel on this, so even though this 4,000 meters per second, uh, we might need to use some of that delta V to turn it around. And I'm worried about the RCS ports doing a lot of guzzling of the fuel. Of course, that only applies if they actually work which I haven't tested yet. I'm assuming I remembered to set them to MMHN-204. But that is a thing that I very often forget. So AIES solar panels there, but uh, AIES solar panels don't rotate to track the sun. So I did add some of the default solar panels just so that I can 
get that as well. You can see, obviously, I added lights so that we can, you know, see stuff. Wait a minute. Why does this say local control? Uh, why does this say local control? Local control. It shouldn't be local control. I should have a signal delay there. Okay, uh, this this is a thing that. Uh, uh, a lot of things are going in my mind that might not be readily apparent. You see, Remote Tech 2 has been updated. And I have updated it in some installs, just to check it out, to try it out. And I'm wondering if I accidentally updated it in this install, or whether at that point I was intentionally updating it in this install. Uh, this is me on a very busy weekend kind of thing. Um, so... So yeah, in which case what could have happened is that signal delay was not enabled. You know, because uh, remote tech settings might have been overwritten. But I don't think so, and I don't think I would have updated remote tech in here, so why do we have local control here? Okay, well something more I'll have to investigate. Oh yes, and uh, while I'm on uh, mods and investigating issues, I did t look into the problems I was having making a plane in the previous episode with uh, advanced jet engine. Oh, that's the wrong way. Hold on. Advanced jet engine. And I tried updating advanced jet engine, but there's a problem with that because it uses the newest version of module manager. So I did a test install and tried to uh, just put together all the updated versions of the mods that use the new version of uh, Module Manager. But uh, So if I just installed uh, the advanced jet engines, what happened was it started using liquid fuel and oxidizer. So I figured it was real fuels that I definitely needed to update. But then when I put together the new install with uh, Module Managers, uh, all the mods with the new module manager. Okay, I'm doing this badly. Uh, okay, we're gonna have a high apoapsis, which is not the worst thing in the world. That's fine. Because um, I was in the middle of talking and wasn't really trying for the circular orbit anyway. But, yeah, so once I had the new install with everything, uh, the it read kerosene, it was uh, taking the right kind of fuel, but unfortunately it wasn't actually sucking in the fuel. It, was, it wasn't actually processing the fuel. It had the thrust, it, it had the thrust effect, but it wasn't actually pushing my plane forward. <laughs> so, so it wasn't uh, actually guzzling fuel and it wasn't pushing my plane forward. So Compared to that, my problem with the weird sound in this version seems like a cakewalk. So yeah, uh, and th th don't get me wrong, I have installed Advanced Jet Engine successfully with this set of mods. It's, uh, I mean, more or less. Uh, it's just that uh, it depends on what version of this set of mods. I actually use Advanced Jet Engines in both the EDB series. I've got that installed there and it does work there. And also in the special install I made for the Nova C8, uh, no it wasn't the Nova C8 one, I've got another project that I'm working on with just airplanes and it works there as well. So this plan using the moon as our reference for inclination to Mars leaves us about two degrees off. So that's a good thing to note for the future. I'll have to figure out which way, but it probably depends on where in Earth's orbit we are. Okay, that's relatively the right place. That's pretty good on the outward trajectory.
Okay, let me just leave it like there for now. Uh, it says 73,000 kilometers, and and really, I'll uh, I'll probably need to tweak it more the second burn more before I can really hit that. I'm actually pretty distressed about the whole local control thing, and that's because I was sort of looking forward to having the time delay. So I might after we do the burn for for the mo uh, for Mars, I am going to look into that. What was that? Throttles down. Okay, uh, yeah, I need to use RCS. Okay, RCS thrusters do actually burn. That's nice. And are they actually doing something useful for me? I don't know. They are, of course, in completely the wrong position to maneuver this thing because they're simply the payload thrusters. Oh well, you know what we could uh we haven't uh dumped the second stage yet, so let me just make sure everything is kosher on that. Okay. Okay. Now it should be a little bit easier to maneuver. Actually we still have some momentum in the right direction, so let's just leave that. How's fuel flow? Very stable. Okay. Okay, that's pretty close. How much is our mid-course burn, by the way? Didn't check that. 803. Seems like 800 is about what I usually get. Again, if Earth was in a different position relative to... Uh, in its orbit, it would be different for the inclination adjustment and possibly less. So there are better and worse encounters with, I well, say encounters, uh, transfer points with Mars. Okay, I think we should start looking into things now. Global Joint Reinforcement has done its thing, its thing, and fuel flow is very stable. Okay. Uh, let's activate and burn. Oh, longer burn than I thought it would be. 12 minutes. Wow. So, at this point I'm going to train this target Earth, Kerbin. And let's see about the power. Well, this is generating some, so... Hmm. Uh, we're in the dark anyway, so... Tough to say. But yeah, we've got uh, Kerbin, and... Do we have some sort of indication of that? Sort of, I think. Okay, so while this is going on, I decided to check the configuration file for Remote Tech, and it still looks exactly the same. It's it, it is the old version. It is. It is not updated, and signal delay is enabled. So, I am at a complete loss of why we have local control here instead of the sig signal delay. Maybe that's going to change once we separate the booster. I can't imagine why. Yeah, I, I don't know what component on here could possibly have made a difference. Unless the probe core itself has... is somehow different. I don't know what's up. 
And again, I was looking forward to figuring things out with the signal delay. That was part of the challenge of this episode. But it says enable signal delay equals true, so there's nothing I can do. Huh. We've got a Force City that's like... That must have been the Vernlander's Force City or something. I don't know what that is. Did it... Did the Force City uh, that I stranded get kicked out by some sort of gravitational influence into this higher orbit? And very inclined orbit? It's interesting. Okay, we're coming up on the end of this burn. We're about to approach escape trajectory here, as you can see orbital period. Wow, you can get a pretty high orbital period. An orbital period of more than a year, looks like, around the Earth. I'm not too sure about that, but... Maybe we should try that sometime. I wonder if it's possible to put a probe around the Earth that has an orbital period of a year. Just as a novelty factor. Not sure that's useful at all, but... Yeah, so we'll be using this stage for the mid-course plane change as well. And so you can see we've got a lot of Delta V. And so I am thinking about making this an orbiter around Mars rather than just a flyby mission. And also to test Mars' uh, aerobraking situation. After all, that was what the problem was with the Nova. And it, it'd be pretty... Uh, pretty low risk situation after all if we're just doing a flyby mission if we're just doing a flyby mission then uh, then we didn't really expect the probe back or anything so we could do all the experiments that we can and then and then decide to try to air break it around Mars and if it doesn't succeed we didn't really lose anything from that but if we do succeed then we might gain something from it so so it's it's a good proposition. Now we're obviously a little bit off here and I'm gonna replot this rather than start from there. Clearly need to go down a bit. Okay, 882 kilometers is pretty good for Duna Periapsis if we can do that. And it looks like our burn will be even less than what we had before. So that's an excellent situation. Uh, Smart ASS is slowly bringing us around to a node, and I'm wondering how. What kind of reaction power does this probe core have? Where are you, probe core? No. There we go. Uh, has reaction wheels, but I don't know how much torque it has. Wouldn't think much. I mean, this has been adjusted by multiple mods to be more realistic in terms of torque. Shouldn't be a significant source of it. I suppose uh, maybe it's just not configured right. I mean, it's got the ability to do the readings, but maybe there's something wrong with it. Which is why we, we're getting the remote tech situation as well as what I would say is more torque than I was, I was expecting. Okay, the next real crisis, as it were, point of tension is going to be electric charge and whether I really have enough of it here. Um, so far we're in the dark, obviously, so that's not good, though we have eight hours worth of battery, which should be enough to bring us to the brighter side of things. I'm just waiting for it to stop rot- maybe it's just rotating due to momentum and not actually trying to point towards the maneuver node. Eventually, on this arc, it should eventually point to maneuver node, I think. Uh, 
I hope this boil off of the actual fuel. Obviously, these cryogenic fuels would actually diminish uh, during the 137 days between now and our our maneuver. And I'm not worried about that, obviously. The maneuver is only 792.8 meters per second. We've got 2,193 in this stage. I just wonder if we have that that element of realism to look forward to or not. Does it seem like we're actually trying to point to a maneuver node or are we just randomly turning? Uh, well, let me, let me turn on RCS and let uh, Smart ASS try this uh, node. Let's try a more concerted attempt at pointing in the right direction. Ah, okay, we weren't. We were just sort of spinning. Okay. Mystery solved on that. So the probe core isn't giving us extra reaction wheel power. Good. Okay, well that's that's pretty much it. So let me just uh, time warp or take RCS off. and then time warp. So our first uh, first escape trajectory here we go 